Nationale. Groen Nationale. Groen Nationale. This is mighty right here, man. This is all of the most high that brothers can get together in unity and say and seek, man. Amongst all these different nations, amongst all these perverts out here, our enemies, man, we got to give the Lord a hand, man. The Lord is magnifying his name in these last days and rising us up to the status we're supposed to be at, man. Give me Psalms 133 and 1, man. Always start off giving the camp in Psalms 133 and 1, man. Because this is a miracle right here, man. It's a miracle right here to be with all my brethren pushing the word of the Lord, prophesying against his wicked kingdom, man. That's right. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 133 and verse 1. Bring it on. How good and how pleasant is it for brethren to dwell together in unity? This is a beautiful and pleasant thing to see brethren dwelling together in unity, man. It's nothing like being around like-minded brothers. Right. It's nothing like being around brothers that will approve you. That's right. It's nothing like being around brothers that will edify you, man. Right. There's nothing better on this earth than to be with like-minded brethren pushing the words of the Lord. Sisters, come look at these signs. We are here for y'all. Go on, you and my family, go ahead and check out these signs. Where the 12 tribes? Put this out right here where y'all at. Right, keep going, keep God. Verse 2. It is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the beard. Even Aaron's beard. Even Aaron's beard. So, sisters, who's your nationality? I can't hear y'all. No, it's all. Hey, man. Right? The Lord may find something to pick it up, man. Right? It's like the precious oil that fell upon Aaron's beard. God. Even Aaron's beard that went down to the skirts of his garment as the dew of Haman and as the dew of descended upon the mountains of Zion. That's how precious it is. Like the dew that ascended upon the Lord's holy place, man. That's how precious it is for brothers to get together in unity, man. Hey. Right? Now that we're done with the soft stuff, man, let's get to the destruction of our enemy. <laughs> Damn Ukraine, damn Russia, and definitely damn Babylon, man. I think I'm here looking at these damn billboards, looking at sex, weird stuff, and this Edomite right here, man. I don't know who that is, this bald-headed Edomite, but to get a statue of Times Square, you gotta have done something wicked, man. And we're here to shake the hand against all his descendants, you nasty so-called white people, man. Because we shouldn't be here. Like our Hispanic brothers and sisters shouldn't be here, man. We should be in our homeland, man. This is not home. This is hell. Right? Let me get it. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 13, and verse 1. The burden of Babylon, which Isaiah the son of Amos did see, lift thee up a banner upon the high mountain. And that's what he did. He lifted that banner upon the high mountain, which is Babylon the Great. Letting you know that destruction is nigh, man. You can smell it in the air that death is coming to Babylon, man. Russia not playing games. Right? Russia not playing games with old man Joe Biden, man. What's up, little brother? What's up, doing, man? Doing good, man. Where y'all see yourself on the sign right here? Come on up. Where y'all see yourself on the sign right here? Touch it. Pull it out. Where y'all at? You there, too? What's that? What's this word right here, man? I can't read that. What's that say? What's that? Yeah, you're on the spot, brother. You're right in the middle. Of course you're on the spot. What's that word say? That says Judah. Right? Right. This is Judah. Right? The so-called black uh, man in America is from the tribe of Judah. That's right. right? Now, you can call yourself black or African-American, right? Now, look at your hoodie and put your hand next to it. Is it the same color? It's not the same color. So why do we call ourselves black? Why do we call ourselves a color? Aren't you greater than the color in the crayon box? My brothers, y'all about to find out today that y'all the greatest people working on this earth. Right? Right. Nobody do nothing right. better than y'all. That's do y'all right. agree? Yeah. You agree with that, right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, you agree with that, man. Not right. because we say it, because you know it, man. It's in your spirit to know that, man. Right. So we're going to show you in three precepts that you guys chose some people. Right. Don't y'all wake up sometimes and be like, man, why do I feel so good? Why am I better than everybody? Look at me. Look in the mirror. Don't I look good? Don't you do that? Of course you do that, because you ate in the image of the man, man. Right. I think it's going to be 28, go to 15. God. So today, y'all going to find out that y'all God chose the people, the Israelites. Right. We're going to give you three precepts. We're not going to uh, beat your head over with Deuteronomy 28. We're going to let y'all know, and we're going to show y'all what y'all got to do as being God's chosen people. That's right. Right. That's right. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 15. But it shall come to pass. 
if thou will not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Do you know what it means to hearken? Hearken means to listen. Right, so this is Moses speaking to the Israelites after they came out of Egypt. Right, if y'all will not hearken, God, if thou will not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses, or right, that all these curses, if you don't, I got you, brothers, if you don't keep the law, statutes, and commandments, all these curses, all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So if a curse was placed upon your brothers, would that be a good thing or a bad thing? That would be a bad thing. Right? You're going to be looking for something bad to happen. Right? Everybody agree a curse is a bad thing, right? Right. Right? right. So now we're going to get to the physical characteristics fitting God's chosen people. Right? Everybody played a game called Guess Who growing up, right? Right? Do we got a, uh, a mustache and glasses? Now we're about to find out who's God's chosen people in these last days. Because right. little do you know, Everybody's not God's chosen people. That's right. It was a lie that was perpetuated through so-called Christianity, man. Please, God. Give me uh, verse 46. God. Verse 46. What? And they shall be upon thee for a sign. What's a sign for? So you know exactly where you're going, right? right? And you see them golden arches where you at? Them golden arches when you at McDonald's. You see a right of Dwayne Reed sign where you at? The way we read. Right. So these are signs to identify who's God's chosen people in these last days. Oh. Verse 16. Verse 16. Cursed shalt thou be in the city. So the Lord said for being hard-headed, stiff-necked, and rebellious, the Lord's chosen people will be cursed in the city. Right, right. Now we can go to any city in America. Who's cursed in the city? Who's cursed in the city? Who's cursed in Brooklyn? Are we living in them in them billion dollar uh brownstones? Is that where we live at? Or do we live in the projects? In the projects. Hey brother, hey brother with the blonde head. If you go to Louisiana, are we cursed in the city? Where, where you from Brooklyn? Where you, uh, I'm from Maryland. You from Maryland? Where? Southern Maryland. Southern Maryland. Southern Maryland. Okay, we're from Baltimore. That's right. Are we are we blessed in Baltimore or cursed in Baltimore? Cursed. We're cursed, right? Can everybody out here in Times Square say that their people are cursed in Baltimore? Can everybody out here say that people are cursed in Brooklyn? Only God's chosen people can say that curse right. in the cities, right. right? Working minimum wage jobs, right? right? Last night and first fire, right. Right. Yeah. laid off for no reason, right. Right. or whatever. God. And cursed shalt thou be in the field. And the Lord said his chosen people will be cursed in the field. But the women will be cursed in the field. You don't know who was in the field? Dump them out, sister. What was we cursed in the field? Third slavery. Third slavery, brother. Yeah. So the white man said he was cursed in the field, then he owned the field. He owned the field. He ripped that back to the field, right? right. He put right. us in the field and made it big cotton. So now that's one characteristic of God's chosen group. He said, I'm going to do three. Let's go to verse 47. Right? So, out here, who fits the curses? The so called blessed Spanish and Native Americans, so far, right? right? We're the only people cursed in the city that was cursed in the field, right? Verse 47 Because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart for the abundance of all things. Because we didn't serve the Lord that we were supposed to. We were supposed to be glad to serve the Lord. Because the Lord gave us any and everything we wanted, man. You needed rain, the Lord made it rain. You needed food in the wilderness, the Lord made bread come from heaven. Right. Because we didn't serve the Lord in joyfulness and gladness of heart. God. Therefore, thou shalt serve thy enemies. The Lord said you gotta serve your enemies. Right? right. So God's chosen people have enemies. Right. Well, that, right. That's easy to believe. Right? Now we're gonna see how we gotta serve our enemies, right? Which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger. In hunger. Right? If you want something to eat, you gotta go to the market. But do I own that market? Brother, did your, did your mother and father own the market? Who owned the market? Say it again. So who's the white man? Our what? Our enemy. Our enemy. There we go. You are to your enemies in hunger, right? And in thirst. In thirst. Do I own Deer Park? Do I own Gateway? Pepsi? Right? Do I own Hennessy? Who owns it? The white man. Right. You're going to your enemy in thirst. Right. Well, we're not making this up, are we? This comes straight out the Bible, right? That's right. And in nakedness. In nakedness. Look at all the clothing we got on, man. Do we own Nike? 
Do I own a Judas? Do I own Polo? Under Armour? Who own all that stuff? And if we did have our own clothing company, who the hell are we getting the clothes from? Our enemies, right? And it's one more part of this, right? And it brought up all things. Now I tell you, everybody out here, to think about it. No one thing under the earth, under the heavens, that you don't got to go to your enemy for. No one thing. Can you name one thing? Can you name one thing? Yes, I can't either. We got to go to him for everything. Right, if we got to die, we got to get a death certificate to say we die. Right. If we get sick, we got to get oxygen from him. Right. A job, a car, a loan, anything under the heavens, we got to go to him, right? And right. so what is his enemy going to do? And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. He shall what? He, he shall, shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. neck. And family, come look at this, man. These are yokes of iron. Come look, come look, brothers. Pull it off, okay? I see. Yokes of iron. What people under the heavens had yokes of iron on their neck by their enemies? We do. So called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. But we're not black. We're not Native American or we're not Hispanic. Right? We're God's chosen people to Israel. That's two. Now I'm about to give you number three. This about to blow some people's minds up here, man. This is, this is crazy, man. Who can you tell so many of you never read this? How many times you been to church? How many times you been? Twice. Twice. How many times y'all go to church? Did y'all learn anything in church? No. No, but y'all left out with empty pockets. That's for sure. Let's go to verse 68. Now, how do we get to this land called America? Bring it out. How do we get over here? I don't know. Sister, help him out. How do we get to America? Y'all agree? Does everybody out here agree we got over here on slaves? Do you agree, brother? Some of us, right? Okay. Well, let's read it out the Bible. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 68. Bring it up. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. So this is Moses speaking to the Israelites just coming out of Egypt, right? So what does it mean that we was in Egypt? Moses said, let my people go. Were we free or were we in slavery? We were in slavery. Let's read out the Bible. It's the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 6 and verse 12. Yeah. Don't be real. Let's don't forget the Lord which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt right. from the house of God, from the house of bondage. Right? So when you read Egypt in the scriptures, it's uh, synonymous with slavery or bondage. Right. right? So the brother going to read it verbatim, and we're going to replace Egypt with what? Slavery. Slavery. Egypt for what? Egypt for what? I got to make sure you're with me, brother. God, right? God. God. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. Slavery. With ships. With what? With ships. How do we go into slavery? With ships. By the way, we all all thy spake unto thee. The way the Lord says it's going to happen. Didn't it happen that way? Right? Thou shalt see it. No more again. We haven't seen our homeland since. We don't know where our homeland is. Right, right. We say Africa. That's a whole continent named after a white man. Right. We don't know where we're from. Black is a color. We all lost and turned out out here, man. Right. And bear, you shall be sold unto your enemy. We got sold to our enemy. Who's your last name, brother? Martinez. Martinez. That's the name of a conquistador, man. Yeah. Right. Slaying your family and put his last name on you. That's right. called ownership. Right. We got sold to our enemy. Who's your last name, brother? X. 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 Well, that's a, that ain't your last name, brother. Come on, what's, what's your real last name? What's your last name? My last name is Israel. My last name is Israel. Okay, X, man. Well, X was given to you by the so-called white man, because that's his language. That's right. Yeah, you still own something. See that? Hold on, I got you, bro. Let me finish. For bond men and bond women, slave men and slave women, and no man shall buy you, and no man shall buy you. Right? So to this day, I got you, brother. I got you. Right? I got you, brother. I'm going to deal with it. Right? So, to this day, come on, brother. We do speak evil. Right? So, to this day, God's chosen people are still in the land of their captivity, the Israelites. So, if we fit them curses, who would we be? No, we wouldn't be slaves. We're greater than slaves. Right. We're right. kings and princesses, man. Right. We are the Israelites, brother. Right. We are God's chosen people. Hold on. That's right. 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 There you go, brother. There you go. 
And us being Israelites, the Lord requires something of us. Give me Deuteronomy 6 and 1. Yeah. Right? This is a beautiful thing, brother. You rising from the dead. Woo. We were dead. We were asleep. We ain't know nothing. That's like the brother said, we're speaking English. This isn't our language. Right. Like the brother said, we speak Hebrew. The last of all could die is the That's holy right. tongue. That's right. right? That's right. Right. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter yeah. 6 and verse 1. Yeah. Now these are the commandments, the statutes, and the judgments which Yahweh, your God, commanded to teach you, that ye might do them in the land, whether ye go to possess it. So this whole, hold your Bible up, King. This whole book doesn't contain just 10 commandments. Right. That's madness to think that it's only 10 commandments that the Lord gave us to keep. Right? right? Hold that, get Baruch 4 and 1. Right? It's, it's madness that they teach us that, right? That's madness. This is a huge book. So the Lord gave his chosen people to what? The Israelites. Who's God's chosen people, brother? I'm going to deal with what you said. I got you. Who's God's chosen people? Now, I got, I'm going to deal with it, but we build them with the brother. The Judahites. The Israel, the southern kingdom and the northern kingdom, brother. Right? So these are the commandments, right? This is the book. Of the Ruth, chapter 4 and verse 1. Bring it up. This is the book of the commandments of God and the law that endures forever. This is the book of the commandments of the Lord that endures forever. Right? So now that you know you're an Israelite, you that's your family, right? That's your family. Now they but I got you, brother. We go you. Oh, praise So look, now we're gonna show you what is required of you to keep the commandments, right? That's what the law requires of you, right? Hold that. Give me First John 2 and 3. But right, I got you, brother. Just hold your tongue. Hold your peace and we're going to build, man. It's, it's all love up here. I'm holding my peace. Right? It's all love. God. This is the book of First John chapter 2 and verse 3. And hereby we do know that we know him. This is how we know that we know God. Everybody under the earth say, I know God, I love God, I praise God. They don't even know his name. They don't even know the, the God that they say, right? If we keep his commandment, how do we know we know God? If we keep his commandment, how do we know we know God? Give me three commandments right now, brother. You got to break them down to me, man. I got you. That's why you're up here, brother. We up here to show you to keep the commandment. Give me right? So we're going to give you commandments, brother. That's our job. We're here to teach you. Right, we're here to teach you so you can get salvation. That's we're here right. to teach you so you can set your house in order because destruction is coming to America. Well, right. how about the break loose here? All these right. beautiful signs and pretty things you see, where all this right. is coming to an end, brother. Right. Right. This fight's going to be shut out. It's going to be all right. 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 Now it's time for you right. as the head of the household, brother, to get everything in order. Right. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 22 and verse 14. Yes, all they that do his command. No, they're going to what? They do his command. They do his command. So you're going to be blessed if you do the commandments, right? That they may have right to the tree of life. You're trying to get immortality, brother. I'm trying to be with you in the kingdom sipping wine. Putting my feet on a heathen's back, man. That's right. Where they're supposed to be. So now you gotta give me Hebrews two and one. Hebrews two and one. Wait, keep going with that. Keep going with that, King. And may enter and through the gates into the city. For without our dads and sorcerers and homemakers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loving and making a lot. If you're not keeping any of those commandments, any commandment, you are sorcerer and whoremonger and everybody who loves the lie. Now, brother, you look uh, right, you look like you don't love lies. I hate lies. That's right. Lies make me mad. That's right. 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 So on. let's get it. Let's get Hebrews 2 and 1. So, brother, this is this is life or death right here, man. Right. Real talk. Everybody in church, they don't tell you life or death. They just tell you, pay me my money and listen to my songs I'm going to sing. Right? We're giving you the true, sincere milk. Right? right. This is the book of Hebrews, chapter 2 and verse 1. Therefore, right. we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard. So we got to give the more earnest heed unto these things, right? Because you can't let these fall by the wayside. You let these fall by the wayside, brother, you're going to die in America. I know you don't want to die. You got kids? You do want to live with your kids? I want to see my kids live. Right. So we got to take the more earnest heed, right? Lest at any time we should let them slip. 
can't make them slip, brother. So we're going to give you these commandments, and you got to teach them to your family. Right. And you from, you from out here. Yeah. Next time we see you, Lord willing, we're going to be keeping these commandments, right? Because right. you want to know the Lord because you love the Lord, right? Right. right? right? It's just that simple. You That's wouldn't be up here listening if you didn't love the Lord. Wouldn't be here at all. Let's get the right. purpose of commandments, man. Right? That's why we out here, man. We out here to get those who desire the word, man. Right? Right. This is for real. This is the book of Leviticus. Chapter 11 and verse 7. Go to, go to, uh, go to verse uh, 2. Go to verse 2. Con, verse 2. Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, Who are the children of Israel? Israel. Who is that? Slaves. No, not slaves. We're the children of Israel. Who are God's chosen people? Right. Who are the Israelites? We are. We are. There we go, brother. Right. Right. Saying, These are the beasts which you shall eat among all the beasts that are on the earth. Right, so now the Lord is going to tell you what you can eat of the beast upon the earth. Because we're kings, man. Kings don't just eat anything off the ground. You ain't going to eat a McDonald's hamburger that's been sitting there for a week, are you? You ain't going to eat some Dorito chips that have been on the ground. So as a king, you have a dietary law. That's right. You can't just eat anything you want. Right? Go ahead to verse 7. Gone. Verse 7. And the swan. And the what? And the swan. The swan, brother. Oh, there we go. Though he divide the hook and be cloven for it, yet he chewed not the cut, he don't digest his food properly. He is unclean to you. He's what? He is unclean to you. Of the flesh shall you not eat. So you can't eat pork. You eat pork, brother? You don't eat pepperoni? You don't eat ham? You don't eat bacon? All praises, man. You keep the commandments and you don't even know. Right? So you said you don't, your family don't eat it, do they? All praises. So don't eat it and even if it's it's tempting, stay the hell away from it, brother. Right. Stay away from it, man. So look, all these this is a, a sign of the curses. Because we ate pork, this happened to our brother. This is our cousin. That's right. We was eating pork, we the reason he got hanged. Right? We was eating pork. That's the reason why this white man is on our brother's neck. Right. We right. gotta take yeah. responsibility, man. That's right. Right? Our sins have to come. But us realizing we're doing wrong. Right. So now that we realize we're doing wrong, we got to do the complete opposite right. by keeping the commandments, right? right? So no point. You say you don't eat it all pray. Right. Of their flesh shall you not eat, and their carcass shall you not touch. They are unclean to you. Right. These shall you eat of all that are in the waters. Now we're going into the waters. Right. Now you think you can eat anything out the waters? Of course not, right? Whatsoever has fins and scales. So what can we eat in the water that has fins and scales? Fish, right? Gone. In the waters, in the seas, and in the rivers, them shall ye eat. And all that have not fins and scales in the seas and in the rivers, of all that move in the waters, and of any living thing, any living thing, which is in the waters, they shall be an abomination unto you. So if we don't have fins and scales, we're an abomination unto you. Right. So what can we eat that's in the water that doesn't have fins and scales? That doesn't have fins and scales. Can't eat nothing that doesn't have fins and scales. Can't eat nothing that doesn't have fins and scales. But what do our people like to eat? What y'all say? Crab? What y'all say? Shrimp. Right? What else? Catfish. Lobsters. Calamari. We eat those things. Don't we call them seafood delicacies? Right? They give you a bag of shrimp. $35. Right. You're like, man, I'm about to take my wife out. She's about to eat good. Clam, lobster, shrimp, the surf and turf. Right. Man, you know what's going on after that. You know what's happening. See, fool, you take, man, no more. We're not eating that no more. That's right. You eat crab, shrimp, and lobster? All praises, man. Ah. Does anybody out here eat crab, shrimp, and lobster? Don't be ashamed. We out here to improve our people right. so we can be better. You eat crab, shrimp, and lobster, brother? There we go. Even the heathens know. Right? <laughs> you eat crab, shrimp, and lobster, brother? You right there, yeah. So now that we know it's a sin, we're going to keep eating it, brother? All praises. Family right here. Y'all eat crab, shrimp, and lobster? Now we know it's a sin. Y'all going to keep eating it? You going to keep eating it? Oh, you don't love the Lord? I know y'all love the Lord because y'all listening. So the Lord says it's an abomination to eat that. Now y'all do love the Lord, right? Let's get first John 5 and 3, man. Get out. Get out. Nothing get out. like milking it out here, man. Get the pure milk session, man. Get out. Right? It's the book. This is the book of first John. Chapter 5 and verse 3. 
For this is the love of God. For what? For this is the love of God. That we keep his commandments. That we keep his commandments. That's what God love God, right? Right, brother? So how do you show that you love God? By doing what? Not you, brother. Now, I know you know the commandments. You look at me, no, I'm, I'm looking at the bird right there. Hey, we got to feed our people, brother. Brother in the bull's hat. How do we show we love God? By keeping what? I don't think you want to participate. You want to listen and learn. Well, we're gonna, you got to keep the commandments, right? Now, let's get some more commandments for the people who want to love God. Right. Right. This is the book of Exodus, chapter 45, and verse 2. Six days shall work be done, but on the seventh day there shall be to you a holy day, a Sabbath of us to the Lord. So the Lord said you got six days to work, but the seventh day is a holy day of rest. What is the seventh day of the week? Saturday, brother. Saturday is the Sabbath day, right? Whosoever doeth work therein shall be put to death. If you do any work on the Sabbath day, you're going to be put to death, right? Do you like to work with, do you uh, cut, the lo cut the lawn, take out the trash on the Sabbath day? You can't do that. So you can't work on the Sabbath day. If you do that, you will be put to death. That's right. Well, it's, it's lawful to do good on the Sabbath, man. Right? So you can't do any... You can't do any. Let me get Mark 4 and 14. Bring it up. Bring it up. Bring it up. Come on, brother. You're not going to be saying that you're 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 going to be saying that
We got friends as well, man. Right. Not because we want to, but because the Lord commanded us to, bro. Right? Right. Throughout the generation forever. So your wife, she got to wear fringes. Your children, they got to wear fringes. That's throughout the generation. That means forever, right? And that they put about the fringe of the borders and ribbon of blue. Ribbon of blue, because we're royalty, brother. We're royal, we're royal people. Nobody has a more royal heritage than the Israelites. That's right, right, right. Nobody. Our heritage is so royal, the white people want to be us. Right? right. The so called black, Hispanic, and Native American can't nobody do nothing better than us. Right. right. right? That's how royal we are, man. Right. You agree with that? Yes, I agree. You agree with that, don't you? That's the truth. That's right. Give me Deuteronomy 7 and 6, man. Right. 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 And it shall be unto you for a fringe that you may look upon it and remember all the commandments of the Lord. These are physical reminders to keep the commandments. Right? So if you want to eat corn, sugar, lobster, what you supposed to do? You're supposed to look at your what? Fringes, that's right. That's you, want, right. you want to eat pork, you're supposed to look at what? If you want to break the Sabbath, you got to look at what, sister? you what? The fringes, that's right. All pain. And do them. And do them. You got to keep the commandments. Right? right? That's that's simple. Boom. I want to go off? Nope, I got my fringes on. That's right. Right? I want to do my own present? Boom. I got my fringes on. That's man. right. Right? This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 7 and verse 6. For thou art a holy people. So you know what it means to be holy? Not the brothers and fringes and the sisters and fringes. What does it mean to be holy? What does holy mean? There you go, brother. Separate. Right? Set apart. The Israelites are set apart unto the Lord. Right? Don't you got a favorite pair of shoes? You going to wear them every day or when it's time to step out? When it's time to step out. Yeah. Right? Don't you got a favorite food? You gonna eat that every day? Or when he's like, yo, it's a month, man. I'm about to throw the steak in. Right? We're separate to the Lord. Right. Meaning we're set apart, right? For thou art a holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God has chosen thee. No, he chose everybody. Has chosen thee to be a special people unto himself. Above all people. No, we're equal. Above all people. God sees everybody the same. Above all people. God is racist. Right. Do you know what it means to be racist? Right. That means you prefer another nation above another That's one. That's right. God is the one true God of Israel. Can anybody, can any other nation do anything better than you? You play sports? Yeah. What you play? play every, every sport. You go and let Steve Nash hit you with an in and out and dunk on you? Nah. you? What you do, bro? What you like to do? Baseball. You go and let, uh, what a white person. That dude right there behind you in the booth. He gonna strike you out? <laughs> Sister, is a white person gonna outdress you? Is a white girl gonna outdress you? Is she gonna put you the same? Look at them. Look at the look. Look how lame they look on the <laughs> board, boys, man. <laughs> Can nobody do anything better than the children of Israel, man? <laughs> and that's not our words. It's the truth. <laughs> it's the truth. Who has the most common sense? Do we go chase tornadoes? Do we go to a uh, uh, damn born written countries to interview people? We have the most common sense in the world, man. Right? right? And it's not just so-called black man. Even though we're at odds with the so-called Hispanic and Native American, we may not see eye to eye to we fit the curses, but our mothers taught us the same thing y'all mothers taught us. Because we're the same people. That's right. right? We're the same people. Right? They all taught us not to trust the white people, that's for sure. <laughs> right? Let's get that. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 22, and verse 5. Yeah. The women shall not wear what was pertaining unto a man. Now we're dealing with our sisters, right? The women shall not wear that which can, uh, pertaining unto a man, right? So what do our women wear that pertain unto men? Say it again, brother. Pants. The Israelite women cannot wear pants. At all. Right. At all. Right? Sister, you gotta come out those pants and get a dress. Right, right. Yeah, a modest dress. That's right. Right? Shouldn't everybody up here be able to see your figure? Right, that's, that's right. for your husband. That's right? right. Sister, you got y'all got on dresses, right? But y'all gotta wear those every day. That's right. Every day you gotta wear dresses. Not because I said it, it's because y'all love the Lord, right? That's right. Right? Look, you got sisters as an example. They have their modest dresses over here. Sure. Right? You could be flying modest. Right, you could be, man, what, you throw a nice skirt on with some shoot, man, you go crazy uh, with it, right? Uh, right? Uh. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. Man, brothers, I don't got to tell you all that. Y'all know that, right? Y'all know that, right? Okay, all praises, right? 
for all that do so are an abomination unto the Lord thy God. All that do so are an abomination. The Lord hates abominations. But the Lord can't stand abominations, man. So we read seven commandments. I want everybody to give me three. You come on now, brother. You're my family. Come on. Come on. Give me, brother. All right, well, you back things like give me the first three commandments you learned today. You can't eat pork. That's right. Ah. Bro, you're free. Ah. What else, brother? Can't wear women clothes. Can't wear women clothes. Ah. Right, it's good brother. Hey, brother, take a flyer, man. Hey. Take a flyer for the meal. Oh, you got one, all uh, You can't eat crab. We already said that. We, man, we gave you seven. Listen, he read when you today? Who's today, Carl? Sa Saturday, the Sabbath. The Sabbath, bro. Oh, oh, we can't on the Sabbath. Sabbath. We're working on it. No working. Oh. That's right, brother. What up? Yeah, hey, yeah. He, he took the what best play. Who do we play, brother? The fringes. Fringes, right? And oh. what's our nationality? Uh, Israelite. Israelite. Oh. Now we're about to get more specific. What tribe you from? Come look at the tribes. What's, what tribe you from, brother? Ephraim. 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 Ephraim, brother. That's mighty right there, man. Right? Say it again. Same with me. Same as me. Right? Tribe of Ephraim, man. Israelite from the tribe of Ephraim. That's right. And what did the Lord require the Israelites to do right? Follow the commandments. Follow the commandments, right? That's right. So, brother, what if you finding out you're Israel, that's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Right, a whole bunch of different things is going to come upon you. You're going to realize that America is about to be destroyed, and it's a blessing to see that. Give me some, right? 25 and verse 7. Right, it's an honor to see your enemies fall, man, because right. your enemies have vexed you, man. You came up here not knowing you're Israelite, you came up here not knowing the commandments because your enemies lied to you. Give me a uh, Psalms 58, starting verse 2. This is the book of Sirach. Chapter 25 and verse 7. There be nine things which I have judged in my heart to be happy. Right, so these are the things that make the Lord happy right here. But the Lord isn't just a monotone, just looking like this. But the Lord has emotions. He's happy, he's angry, he's sad, he's vengeful. Right, these are the things that make the Lord happy. And the tenth, I will utter with my tongue. A man that has joy of his children. Right? It's happy for the Lord to see a man that have joy of his children. I know you have joy of your children. They make you go harder, man. Now they're going to make you go harder in this world, right? Because you're an Israelite from what tribe? Ephraim. There we go. Right, right. And he that liveth to see the fall of his enemy. And what? And he that liveth to see the fall of his enemy. The Lord is pleased to see the fall of his enemies, right? The Lord, at the, at the most the Lord. Aren't you tired of working? Aren't you tired of having your life hanging in the balance? You don't know if you get pulled over, if you're going to make it home? Right? Like, don't New York got that stop and frisk? Can't they put something in your pocket on you? And then you go to Rikers and don't nobody see you no more, man. That happens all the time. Right? He that sees the what? God. He that liveth to see the fall of his enemy. So we can't wait to see the fall of our enemy, brother. These are the people who oppressed us and did all this wickedness to us, man. Let me get that, okay? This is the book of Solomon, chapter 58, and verse 2. Yeah, in her, we work wickedness. In the heart, they work wickedness, man. We was just looking up here. They put some robot booty up there, man. Right. To subconsciously make us think about sex and make our, our, our sisters to be whores. These are the daughters of Zion. Right. This is the precious apple of the Lord's eye. That's right. But that's what they do. They work mystery. Look, we got the whiskey right there to make us drunkards. That's right. right. They got all the stuff out here to buy and sell and defile the Sabbath. They work wickedness in their heart to make us fall short. Right? The Lord demands perfection of us. That's right. right? But we're coming back and learning all things through the spirit of the harlot by Simeon Give me John 14 and 26. Right? Ye weigh the violence of your hands in the earth. Right, and they weigh the violence of their hands on the earth. Who is the only people who bomb the other countries? It's a so called white man. Right. When the last time you seen a Chinese man bomb another? When, have you seen the Chinese man bomb America? Have you seen the Indian man bomb America? Who are the only people bombing people? They raise the violence in their hands, man. Right. And the Lord is stirring up our remembrance to know who our enemies is. Right. Because we've been rocked to sleep in Babylon the Great. To think everybody's the same. This dude right here is not the same as us, man. Right. 
And that's the, that's the brainwash and manipulation that Babylon the Great has taught us, man. But the Lord is waking us up, right? This is the book of John, chapter 14 and verse 26. Bring it up! But the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things. So the Spirit of the Lord, who the name is not Jesus Christ, is Yahweh Shah. Can you say that? You see how easy it flows? Oh, it flows right out, man. That's the name of the Lord, because there's no J in Hebrew. The J is only 500, 600 years old. So the Lord's name is not Jesus. It's what? Yahweh Shah. Right. So the spirit of Yahweh Shah is bringing it into your remembrance, and he's teaching you things that you never knew. It's blessed to be able to see these in the last days, man. It's, it's a blessing to see that. Right. right? Come on. He shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. Whatsoever I have said unto you, peace I leave you with. So like it. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. What is the word given? Give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled. So the Lord gave us peace. And why do we know peace? We know the destruction of our enemies. We know the downfall that's going to happen on a rapid way to Babylon the Great. We know that this place is finished. Right? And look, look, it's nothing but folly set up here to distract us. Look, brothers out here dancing, flipping over people, man. How does that profit us? How does that uplift us from being in the ghetto? How does that uplift us from killing one another? From selling drugs to one another? From prostituting our daughters out? How does this uplift us? It doesn't. But those who have an ear for the Lord are going to come and hearken unto the Lord. Right? As what? What's our nationality? The Israelites. The Israelites. I'm going to keep asking you, man. You better not forget, man. Look, the babies back here, they're ready to point it to and say, you don't got it. God damn. Right? Back to Isaiah 58. Right? Because these enemies, man, they sit here and they try to sit you out. Satan is desiring to have you. Right now, you are precious gold, brother. You know you are Israelite? Satan is going to work ten times harder. So that means you got to work ten times harder. By keeping what? Right. Keeping the commandments, man. Right? Right. You got to keep the commandments of the Lord. That's right. Right? This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 58, and verse 3. Yeah. I'm giving you the characteristics of the enemy so you don't get beguiled by Satan. Right, so Satan don't come up and, and, and desire you as, as, as a lamb that can't run. Give me first Peter five and eight. Right, give me first Peter five and eight. Oh. This is the book of first Peter, chapter five and verse eight. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, is as a roaring lion. So you gotta be sober and vigilant. So what I'm doing to you is giving you the manifestation of what Satan is going to do to you. The manifestation on the earth of Satan is the so-called white man. That's our chief enemy, right? Hold that. Give me Isaiah, I mean, uh, Psalm 83. We're going to show this brother who his enemies are, man. So you're not walking around thinking everything is sweet and good, right? It's not good out here, man. It's not good at all. This is hell, man. This is the punishment. So you got to know who your enemies are. Because Satan is going to be going to and fro to be God, you man. Right. You're going to order a pizza, bam, they're going to throw pepperoni on it. You're not even going to know till you're done eating it. Right? You're going to go get a salt, they're going to throw bacon on it. So you got to be mindful and watching at all times, brother. Not right. just for you, but for your household, man. Right? Right? Right. Come. Because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walk at the belt, seeking who he may devour. He's trying to devour you now, brother. Right? You're a precious gem now. It's only a way to the brothers and sisters who know that they're Israelites, man. And you're one of those select few who have a chance to get salvation out of here, man. So we're going to show you where your enemies are, man. We gave you commandments. If we was going to read the whole commandments, we'd be out here till next year, right? So now it's your job, brother. What's your name? Jay. Jay Amos. I didn't even introduce myself. So, like, so you, Jay, now it's your job to sit with your family and read with them. Don't let these words get cast behind you, man. Because you need the sincere and sure mercy of the Lord in these last days. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 83, and verse 2. There's a Bible right here for you, but that's love, man. This is a Bible for your household, brother. I pray this, man. 
all crazy, man. It's love right there, man. Man, shit in my shit, y'all. That's the first step on the stairs into the uh, kingdom, man. But you got to make sure you don't lose that Bible, man. You should be in the poop. Boom. Hey, we put a precept. You should be able to put a precept like that, man. And it starts by you opening that Bible. Man, look how hard your wife is smiling back there, man. Right? That's love right there. Chapter 83 and verse 2. Yeah. For love, there are enemies making to know. And they that hate thee have lifted up their head. Right. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people. They take crafty counsel by changing our nationality every year. They take crafty counsel by putting falsehoods in our face to make us believe a lie, man. That's what they do, right? And consult it against thy hidden ones. Right. And you in building this here in New York. With our representation at the UN, the Israel, they coming together how to destroy you more, right? Okay? How they can how they can make your children more base, right? When these are the greatest children on the earth, man, they do that, right? They have said, "Come and let us cut them off from being a nation." We cut off from being a nation. We don't know who we are. We don't know left from right, up from down. They got cops on every black patrolling us, and they don't even live there. They go home to the suburbs after they move our homes, man. That's right. My boy. That the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. For they are consulted together with one consent. They are confederate against thee. So everybody is a confederate to bring you and your family down. To bring away your family. To bring right. us down, brother. Right, right now we're going to find out who our enemies are, man. Right. So I'm not going to have you walking around on the ground. Right, and you don't know who your enemies are. Right. I want you to know so you can teach your family who their enemies are, man. Right. The tabernacles of Eden. The tabernacles of Eden. That's the so-called white man. That's right. That's your chief enemy. And we don't got to go into a deep breakdown of why he's your enemy. You know why he's your enemy. Right? And the Ishmaelites. The Ishmaelites. Who do you think the Ishmaelites are? The Arabs, the nasty Arabs, the hairy nasty Arabs, man. Who sell you cigarettes? You don't smoke cigarettes, dude. All crazy. They sell you pork. Come, come. Oh, there we go right there. These brothers up here on it, right? So the white man is Edom. Ishmael is the so called Arabs, right? Of Moab. Of Moab, right? Where's Moab at, brother? Who's Moab? Moab. The Chinese, that's your enemy, man. They sell you cats and dogs and rats, and they call it number seven. Number seven is what they call them, right? And the Hagarines. And the Hagarines, the nasty Africans, man. The nasty, funny shake called Africans, man. They look down on you, brother. That's right. Don't they look down on us? They look down on us, brother. We're not Africans. We look better, we talk better, we smell better. We're not rude. We ain't nothing like them, man. At all. Gabor, oh, another African nation. And Ammon. And Ammon, the so-called Japanese man. They sell you all this technology to spy on you, to make you fall into lust, make you uh, worship all these celebrities, man. That's what they do. That's what these humans do, man. And Amalek. And Amalek, those are the chief of your enemies right there. They come from Eden. That's the Jewish man. The Jewish man who desires to be like us, brother. Give me Revelations 2 and 9. They walk around in Brooklyn. They got their own uh, police uh, set up, their own ambulance. They want to be like you. This brother used to live in Brooklyn. How was it out there, kid? Hey, man. The, Jew, the, the fake Jews, they, y'all know they took over Crown Heights. Took over Crown Heights, man. That's the, Crown Heights is Jewish world. Yeah. Comical world, yeah. right? This is the book of Revelation. Chapter 2, and verse 9. Yeah. I know thy works and tribulation. Oh, the, work, the Lord knows our works, how we try and have as hard as we can to keep the commandments. Our tribulation, how we catch them now. How we just can't seem to get it right. How the doors open, but as soon as we get close to it, it stands right in our face, man. Right. The Lord knows the tribulation that we're going through. Ah. Right. And poverty. And poverty, man. Just because you got 10000 in the bank, we're still poor, man. That's right. We still don't have nothing, man. Right. They can come and take all the money out the bank if they want to, man. Right. And say we're never there. We raise the records, man. Right? That's what they do. They, like the brother said, they freeze your accounts. How many times the bank that froze your account for no reason? More than enough, man. Uh, right? That's our poverty, man. Because the so-called white man's face is on the money. He ain't subject to him in all things. 
blood thou art rich. The blood, blood thou art rich. Bro, you the richest person walking on this earth, man. You and all these brothers out here, show around, kid. Show around, right? You and all of us out here, man. We the richest people, man. We got the richest heritage. Right. Nobody has anything like us, man. We're rich. And I knew the blasphemy, the lie, of them which say they are Jews and are not. The Lord said he knows the lies of them which say they are Jews and are not. But what? But of the synagogue of Satan. But the synagogue of Satan, man. That's right. So you are an enemy, brother. And as a wise man, you got to foresee the evil coming. Because this, this place is on a ticking time bomb. That's it's right. It's been so long that this place is going to still be the way it is. It's not like, oh, well, you mean you, Junkie. It's not like that anymore. It's getting worse and worse and worse and worse, right? So now it's time to put your nose in that book, brother, and get into the book and make sure you understand how to serve the Lord properly, not for your salvation, but for your wife's salvation, That's for right. your children's salvation. That's right. right. My time is up. Let me get, uh, let me get Luke 18 and 7. Let me get uh, Job 17 and 9. My brother, you're my family. I would, I would recommend that you stay to eat up all you can. Because we came all the way from Baltimore just to talk to you, brother. Yeah. Yeah. All the way from Baltimore just to talk to you. Yeah. That was my sole purpose for coming out here, man. And it's all praise to the most high. Right? Yeah. This is the book of Luke. This is the book of Luke. Chapter 18 and verse 7. Yeah. And shall not God avenge his own elect? So the Lord is coming to get the elect of Israel. 12,000 from each tribe and the one third who repent and come out of the ways of his world. Yeah. Which cry day and night unto him. Do not cry unto the Lord for the atrocities you see. You may not be part of the elect, brother. So watch, watch and, and pay attention to what's going on, man. Let your heart be filled with the sorrow so it'll make you go harder for the Lord so you can get salvation and get out of this captivity, man. Right? Right? Though he bear long with them, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. The Lord is coming like a thief in the night, man, when we least expect it. That's right. Brother, you coming in into the truth at the right time, man. Right. The right time. Ain't right. nobody coming in now. Right. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth now brother you gotta find out how you can build your faith up in these last days you gotta build your faith with virtue with temperance with charity with brotherly love all these things to make it out of here man well let me get that kid this is the book of Joel, chapter 17 and verse 9 a great man shall be a story at this time 17 and 9 oh so like it the righteous also shall hold on his way. Like the righteous is going to hold on to his way. Right? We're going to find out that this is the way you should have been going all along. But hold on. 36. Out of your 36 years of life, you've been living a lot. Now you're finding out this is the righteous way you should go, right? So you got to hold on to it, man. You know, you used to go on the roller coasters and they start getting a little bumpy. You hold on to that bar. That's how you got to hold on to this, right? And he that had clean hands, you gotta clean your hands, you gotta reprove your ways, right? Get in there, who's you gonna cut yourself, right? Hold that, give me Hebrews 4 and 12, man. You gotta cut yourself, not literally, not, not like that, but you gotta, you gotta read this, and it's gotta make you feel bad when you read it. Like, I've been doing this to the Lord over and over and over, and the Lord has had mercy upon me, right? This is the book of Hebrews, chapter 4, and verse 12. For the word of God is quick and powerful. When it says quick, it's alive. Now, this is a living spirit right here. God. And it's powerful, man. The sister was just over here crying when the brother was teaching her. Uh -huh. right? And sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the... Salakia. Piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. And of the joints and marrow. So this thing is gonna cut you up so you can get built back up, man. And stand boldly like a man of the Lord. But I see you, brother. That all the brothers see you, man. Yeah, right? Yeah. Right, you a king waiting to put that crown on, man. Yeah. And we giving you the pillow. Now it's your job to take it off the pillow and put it on. Right? Come. Come. And it's a disorder of the thoughts and intents of the heart. It's gonna discern your thoughts and the intent of your heart, man. 
and then set you on that straight and narrow path, man. That's what you need. This is my last few seconds, and that's probably coming up. This is the book of Lamentations, chapter 3, and verse 23. They are new, chapter 22. 22. It is of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed, because his compassion fail not. It's the only the Lord's mercy that we're even able to have this conversation. I know for myself, I should have been dead a long time ago. Uh, now you too, right, brother? Uh, we was we was wilding out. It's only at the Lord's mercy we able to stand here and get this edification and get this understanding, right. so that we can set ourselves in order. My right. family right here. I got four kids. Uh, I gotta go hard for my four kids. Uh, How many kids you got? You got two. You gotta go hard for your two kids. Right. This brother got kids. Uh, a lot of brothers up here have kids, uh, so we like minded. We gotta get ourselves in order. Right. We don't have a lot of time. Time is not of the essence right now. Time is not of the essence. They are new every morning. It's new every morning. The Lord gives us a, a, a new day to repent every day, man. Every time we breathe, it's a time to repent. Every time we think that we're not under the ground six feet, it's a time to get ourselves in order. Great, right? Great is thy faithfulness. Great is the Lord's faithfulness. And with that, come your son. Come your son. Come on, brother, you're going to feed you some more, brother. I know you want to eat some more, man. I know you want to, man. Stay up here and get this way.